Interesting, interesting. Good afternoon, YouTube. I hope you're doing well. Oh, man. I think I have some allergies, but other than that, we're walking. We are walking. Now, I'm just going in and out of the post office, just, just testing some waters. Testing some post office waters. So, anyway, doing the stick shift right now, pain free, uh, without the boot. Thank you, Pegasus 35. Nike, it feels, it feels really good in the Pegasus 35, just saying. So, all right. Oh man, I'm just smiling on the inside. Just one baby step at a time. All right, onward and upward. So yesterday I promised to uh, give you an update on my foot and I have not been able to use the foot log for, uh, to massage the bottom of my foot for about five weeks because it was, ba it was just too tender, too painful, especially at the beginning. And I probably could have started maybe like three or four days ago, but I just wanted to make sure that the foot was pain free and it is, okay? So it is, it is, it's like it doesn't hurt when I'm walking around in the shoe at all. Um, and now with a foot log, I've just been a little nervous uh, putting weight and pressure and uh, yeah, pressure points with this foot log onto the bottom of my foot. And so we're doing well. And this means I'm, I don't know when, if it's tomorrow or the next day, but really start walking in a, in a shoe rather than a boot all the time. Uh, it's not quite time yet. I, I just, I want to get another good night's rest in me before I make that jump. But um, anyway, oh, delivery. Hold on, hold on. How's it going? All right, I'm back. Yes, a couple more pairs of shoes arrived. I will open these up uh, hmm, either later in the vlog or maybe even tomorrow. Maybe I'll do one tonight. How does that sound? So again, uh, foot is on the mend and we're not quite ready yet for jogging, but I can, I can taste it and I uh, just want to be as smart as possible, patient as possible, but I see light, a lot of light at the end of the tunnel. So this is good. I can't resist. We're opening up a box right now. I can't wait till tonight. Are you kidding me? Come on. Let's do this. Hi, right, here we go. Oh, what one is this gonna be? Bada bing. Oh yes. Oh, I, I, uh, I wasn't sure which one this was. All right, boom, bright orange. You know what color that is. A good old Nike shoe, but what Nike shoe is it? It's gonna be, oh, what's it gonna be? Here we go, boom. Oh yeah, a cross country spike, the Nike Zoom Rival XC. Are you a little surprised? I'm a little surprised, frankly. Uh, I just, okay, I wanna do some 1K repeats on the grass at some point. I've got some huge soccer fields like two miles south of my house. I'll do a two to three mile warm up uh, to these soccer fields, toss these on my feet, these Zoom Rival XC. So this is what I'm talking about. Oh, good times on the cross country course. All right, here we are, back in the studio. Uh, dinner is done, children are asleep. 
Uh, the racing season is on the horizon. Life is good. Foot is feeling better. I'm getting a little excited with these shoes arriving today. The Nike Zoom Rival XC. I got to get used to that name. I haven't, haven't said that very much. The Nike Zoom Rival XC uh, Cross Country Spike. Uh, but before we talk about those, and I am going to open up the second box here in a minute. Uh, first of all, I want to show you my old... CU cross country waffle that I used to train in and yes the sun has gotten to it and so it's just fascinating to see kind of the inside of a Nike cross country waffle look at that like the outsole is just oh there goes the dirt ah that it's just peeling it's just like coming apart and it's amazing like I'm just oh man that is so cool to kind of see the inside and see the midsole or lack thereof oh my goodness anyway that's kind of neat and I will probably pull that all the way off tomorrow it's crazy just to see the construction the construction of a shoe and how this oh man like it's a little sad that it's falling apart but it's at this I'm not gonna throw it away uh, but I just wanted to see the inside a little bit so anyway that's pretty neat okay moving on to the Nike Zoom Rival XC. Now you might be wondering why I am ordering cross country spikes when I'm obviously beyond the cross country years. Although, who knows, maybe I'll try and like jump into some USATF club cross country in the late fall. I don't know, uh, we, we shall see. But this is a cross country spike that I am excited to use for this upcoming summer doing K repeats on a grass, as I already mentioned, on a grass soccer field. Um, and this cross country spike, it I wouldn't put it in the fast or lightweight category for if there's a high schooler out there interested. I think you, you could definitely find uh, lighter cross country spikes out on the market, uh, but for $44, I couldn't pass it up. And I actually wanted a spike that had a little more midsole protection. I didn't want a, a really streamlined, like you can get cross country spikes that weigh I think I've seen a couple like that are under three ounces, like really, really lightweight. This is six ounces or just under six ounces in my size. Uh, so I'm excited about it and it does have the classic Nike Flywire cable, which I don't know if it's necessary to have Flywire cable on a cross country spike. We will see, I will put it through the paces for you, uh, so hopefully as soon as possible. And so I'll be, I'll be, I've never, uh, put a cross country spike on that has fly wire cable. And for all the high schoolers out there, I will, I'm planning to test out some other cross country spikes uh, this summer leading into the fall cross country season. So stay tuned. I will do my best to try out some Hoka's, some New Balance, Saucony. Uh, what else? I think there's even some Adidas spikes that I want to try out. So stay tuned for that. And I'm excited. And moving on to shoe number two that arrived today. Hold on. Let me get the box here. Okay. Where's my, where's my trusty knife? Uh, there. Oh, there it is. Hold on one second here. So, boom. There we go. Boom. One snap. There it is. All right. What's going to be in box number two? Oh, man. Yes, it has to do with racing. Here we go. Oh, hey, yo. Solomon in the house. Oh, my goodness. You know what this is. It's the Solomon S-Lab Sense 7 SG. Oh, my goodness. Actually, let's put this one up here. And so I cannot wait to race in the Solomon S-Lab Sense 7 SG. My first impression out of the box, game changer through the upper. Game changer. This S6 wasn't bad. Not a bad upper. Uh, not. I can already tell Like the breathability on this guy is going to be amazing. And if your feet are getting, getting really wet in a really rainy or muddy race or puddles or what have you, I can tell there's going to be some pretty decent drainage out, the sh out, the, out of the upper uh, if water gets inside the shoe. Whereas this upper is a little more sealed and way more rigid and way more uh, and just heavier. I can already see it. It gets me beyond, beyond excited. In fact... Uh, this shoe has similarities to a cross-country spike. It really, really does. Um, it runs a little narrow, uh, so it's, it, you know, if you are a wide foot, uh, watch out. This probably won't work out for you, uh, through, especially through that midfoot, just looking at it, and even in the heel, frankly. Wow, that heel is narrow. So it's, it's designed for fast racing, up on your toes as much as possible, and again, this this is a uh, this is a game changer and right now on your screen you're looking at the two weights of the two different shoes so of the Solomon S Lab Sense 6 
the 2018 iteration, and then the Sense 7, the 2019 iter iteration. That's a pretty good uh, weight drop in one year. Not, I am, I am beyond excited that they dropped the weight that much, and in a 13 mile uphill race, like, weight really, really matters in my humble opinion. Oh, this is beyond exciting, and yes, the racing season is on the horizon. Oh yeah, real quick, 22 millimeter stack height in the heel, 18 in the forefoot. It does have a, a rock plate here in the bottom, so if you are racing in rocky conditions, uh, which that's what this shoe is designed for, like it's it just aggressive, uphill, rocky, muddy, whatever you wanna throw at it, there is a rock plate here through the outsole. So that is very, very good news. And so that's all I got for you today. Thank you for tuning in. Spikes is gonna be the key word because we talked about cross country spikes with the racing season on the horizon. It's a little ways off, but yeah, it's on the horizon. I'm calling it now. And the question of the day is, I know I've never asked this, but uh, this is a little, um, anyway, it's not like a critical question, but I like it anyway. So what is your favorite colorway for a racing spike or a racing shoe. Whether it's road or trail, doesn't matter. So the colorway, what if, and you're wondering, what am I talking about? A colorway is the design. So the actual color of the shoe, again, doesn't really matter, but uh, I'll be curious to hear, like, do people like to race in all black? Do they like white? Do they like a red, like a racing red? Or maybe a neon green, right? So let me know, let us know what your favorite colorway is and maybe why. And you know, maybe you have a, a thought process behind your colorways, that would be cool to hear as well. Oh, and I just realized the light is out, sorry about that. Thank you for watching, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Woo, pretty good day, pretty good day. See you tomorrow.